everybody and welcome back to another video with me, Miss Martins. Today we're going to be looking at some grade 11 chemistry and in particular we're going to be looking at bond length, bond energy, bond order and everything related to that little specific section of work and we will be looking at this in terms of various past papers. Let's jump right in. So we will be starting off with some common tests, some national papers. Let's get right into it. Our first question right off the bat is asking for a definition, but before we get into that, let's read the little bit of information before and look at the graph itself. This is a very common graph that you will see in this section of the work, so it's very important that you know how to interpret this graph. So it says the graph below shows how the potential energy varies with distance between the nuclei of two nitrogen atoms when a double bond between the nitrogen atoms is formed. Now, in science, in physics and chemistry, it's very important for you to look at a graph, look at the axes given and see what is going on here. So potential energy is on my y-axis over here and it's measured in kilojoules per mole. And on my x-axis over here, we have distance between nuclei in picometers. So picometers is a unit of measurement. It's kind of like millimeters, nanometers, micrometers. Picometers are tiny. In order to convert picometers to meters, we multiply by 10 to the power of negative 12. Just by the way. So to get picometers to meters, you multiply by 10 to the negative 12. So you can imagine how tiny a picometer is. So what this graph is showing me is it's showing me how the potential energy varies as I change the distance between the nuclei of two nitrogen atoms. So what I'm doing here is I'm showing you the same. This is one um, nitrogen atom. Here's another nitrogen atom. This would represent the distance between them. So as I vary this distance, okay, let's just call this distance. As I vary this distance between the nuclei of the hydrogen atom of, of the nitrogen atoms, we see a change in energy. Okay, so if you want inf more information about how this graph works, please let me know in the comments below and I'll do a more detailed video. But for now, it's very, very, very important to understand that when the atoms are very, very far apart, there's not much of a force of attraction between them. And as they move closer and closer to one another, the potential energy starts to decrease. Now, when they are at the perfect optimal distance away from one another, where the potential energy is at its lowest. This is where a chemical bond will occur. So over here, this is where the bond occurs at this particular distance. So this over here is what we call the bond length. This would be 125 picometers. That's the distance between the nitrogen atoms when there's a bond, a chemical bond, okay, when that double bond forms. And the potential energy would be 418 kilojoules per mole. That would be the bond energy. So that's the energy released when the bond is formed. And that's the energy that is required to break that same bond. Okay, so let's quickly define bond length. I think we've answered a lot of these questions over here already. So let's quickly define bond length. Remember, definitions are very important in your exams. So the definition for bond length, the average distance between the nuclei of two bonded atoms. What is the bond length in picometers of my nitrogen double bond over here and as i mentioned you can see that this axis over here the x-axis measures distance between the nuclei and this point of the graph over here where the potential energy is at its lowest effectively this is when we will form a stable molecule this is when the bond the chemical bond will form and that over there if we read upwards is therefore the bond length so 125 picometers. That's all they want you to do as an answer. Now just remember if they ask for it in meters, then you would say times 10 to the 12 meters. 5.3 says the bond energy of the nitrogen, nitrogen triple bond is 946. Will the bond length of the nitrogen triple bond be greater than, less than, or equal to your answer in 5.2? Now first things first, this graph represents the how potential energy varies with the distance between two nuclei of two nitrogen atoms when there's a double bond formed. So that is this graph. And we can see over here that the bond energy is 418 kilojoules per mole. Now they just, in the next question, they're speaking about the bond energy of a nitrogen triple bond. Okay, so not double bond, triple bond. And we can see that that bond energy is much, much higher. 
And that makes sense because a triple bond has a larger bond order than a double bond. Okay, so a triple bond, three bonds of year, three um, pairs of shared electrons. Double bond, two pairs of shared electrons. So we know that triple bonds are stronger than double bonds. Therefore, they'll have a higher bond energy. So now they want to know about bond length. So the bond length of our nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond will be less than our answer in 5.2 less than and then they want to know the relationship between bond energy and bond length so i'm just going to do that over here and what we can conclude basically is the shorter the bond length the greater the bond energy okay or the longer the bond length okay bigger bond length greater bond length then smaller bond energy and think about it like this if these atoms are pulled closely together they have a very 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 short distance between their nuclei it means that their bond is very, very strong. Just think about it. They're close to each other, very, very close, very, very tight. It's going to, it's going, you're going to need more energy in order to break that bond. So here's a multiple choice version of that question we just did. Bond length is the average distance between the nuclei of two bonded atoms. So just be careful. They can always ask definitions in terms of multiple choice as well. Here's another question. We've got bond length, bond energy. They give me two different bonds, a CH bond and a CN bond. And our first question says, explain why the bond energy of the CN bond is more than the bond energy of the CH bond. So here you see bond energy is 890 for the CN bond and 413, that's much lower for the CH bond. But you can see their bond lengths aren't really different. So obviously they don't want you to refer to bond length in your answer. In the previous question, we compared the relationship between bond energy and bond length, and we said sometimes, remember, there are always ex exceptions to our rules. Most of the time, the higher the bond energy, the shorter the bond length, okay? But in this case, there seems to be another reason why CN has such a high bond energy. So if you can't use bond length to explain the differences in bond energy, and this is a massive difference, you need to look at bond order, Okay, now bond order has to do with the fact um, of, is it a single bond? Is it a double bond? Is it a triple bond? So we're comparing CH and CN, and you should know that CH and C versus CN, they would have very different bond orders. So CN is actually a triple bond, and it makes sense because if you think about nitrogen, nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five valence electrons, and carbon has one, two, three, four. So nitrogen needs three more in order to be stable. So it will form a triple bond over here with carbon. So the CN bond is a triple bond. And CH would form a single bond because again, carbon may have four. Hydrogen has one valence electron. So hydrogen needs one more to be full. So it'll share one with the carbon. So it will be a single bond like that. Okay, so something like that, that would be a single bond, that would be a triple bond. So it is very, very, very different bond orders. And just as a side note, we know that carbon and nitrogen can form the cyanide ion, which is basically CN minus. And the reason why is because they form that triple bond. So the carbon will, be tri will have a triple bond to the nitrogen. And then this entire thing will have a charge of negative one, which means it has an extra electron. And the reason why is because these three electrons over here, these three over here, are shared with these three over here, and that's where the triple bond comes from. And then we have a lone pair here on the nitrogen, and we have one lonely little electron here on the carbon, which doesn't like to exist by itself. So we give it another electron, and that's where the negative comes from. It's pretty interesting, but all you need to know is that the bond order for this, for C and N is triple, for CH it's single, and just by the way, that's why a carbon atom can form four single hydrogen bonds around it, or bonding with hydrogen. So it can share with one hydrogen over there, another one over there, another one over there, and another one over there. All single bonds, pretty cool. It's because carbon has four valence electrons. But anyway, back to the question. We will then explain that CN has a higher bond order, okay, which it's a triple bond, and therefore it also has more orbitals overlapping than the CH bond, which has 
you know, only single bonds, so a much lower bond order. And we know that as the bond order increases, the amount of energy needed in order to break that bond increases. Here's another graph, and it says it's showing the energy change that takes place when two atoms move towards each other. So remember we said over here would be when the atoms are very, very far apart from one another. Over here, as we move this way, this will be where the atoms are moved closer together. And when the energy shoots down like this, this is the optimal distance between their nuclei and the optimal potential energy for them to bond, creating a stable molecule that X represents the bond energy. Okay, so bond energy. And when you are mentioning what a quantity or variable is, just tell me the units. I know they don't give units here, but usually it's in kilojoules per mole. And then they say they want y, so y is this over here, this distance here. So if we look at our x-axis, we can see that the x-axis is distance between the nuclei. So then y is measuring here along the x-axis, so y would be bond length, just like we discussed earlier, and in this case, bond length is measured in picometers. Next question wants us to define the concept represented by x. So remember, x is bond energy. So basically, they want us to define bond energy. So basically, I'll copy and paste it for you so you have the definition. The next question asks us to explain the relationship between bond order, bond length, and bond energy. And it's three marks. So if you have a question asking you to explain the relationship between three things, and it's three marks, make sure you mention all of these in your answer. So here's our answer. The higher the bond order, and remember bond order is referring to if it's single bond, double bond, or triple bond. So the higher the bond order, so as we go from single bonds to triple bonds, the shorter the bond length, so triple bonds will have the shortest little bond length, that makes the bonds stronger and therefore the bond energy increases because we need more energy in order to break those bonds and more energy will be released when those bonds are formed. So can you see how my answer mentions higher the bond order, bond length, and then we mention strength of bond, which is related to bond energy. There we go. So here's a summary of definitions from this section. And if you want to see more grade 11 chemistry exam questions, remember to check the description because I go through a lot more past papers on a bigger variety of topics. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if I've helped you. And I can't wait to see you in the next video.